Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Crypto Sipto. I am your host, certified sommelier and cryptocurrency enthusiast, Jeremy Cox. And today we have three wines from Essentially Geared Wine Company in cans. Hmm, those canned wines again. Uh, today we're going to be pairing the Essentially Geared Red and Rosé and Bubbles with this coin called EOS. And I'm going to get to the coin in a little while. But first, as always, we'll uh, focus on the wines. And these are all sourced from California. Uh, the company is very um, concerned and, and excited about uh, sustainability and being green. And uh, you, you can see a little bit from their website here. It's going to be in the background that uh, it's all about camping. It's all about like going out on picnics and who wants to bring a bottle of wine and a corkscrew and wine glasses with you when you're going to go camping or you're going to go on a picnic? So much easier to bring the cans. But the question is, is it good wine? So we're going to ooh, we're going to start with the bubbles here. I'm only going to put a little bit in the glass just so that we can kind of see the color of it. But I'm going to drink it the way it's meant to be drank in the can for the most part. Uh, another quickie, if I haven't already mentioned this before, if you really want to get the most out of your, your sparkling wines or your champagnes, drink it out of a wine glass or at least like a, like a, uh, something that's a little bit less fluted than a champagne flute. Those are built so you can look at the bubbles and be all pretty and be like, oh, I'm celebrating. Look at this. But, uh, you really can capture more essence of the sparkling wine or the champagne when you're drinking it out of a glass like this. So, all right, it's, uh, it's, got a, it's got a really nice golden color, really small bubbles, which is uh, indicative, indicative of a well-made sparkling wine. There aren't too many bubbles though. Maybe I held this for too long, I'm not sure, but let's see. It's dry. It's got those apple notes. It's not as like nutty as a typical champagne would be, but you're also drinking California sparkling wine. So unless it's coming from a really high quality producer that knows uh, that, that's going for that, that champagne style, um, that's not this. But this is very enjoyable. And if I'm out on a you know backpacking or on a camping trip, I would, I'd be down for it. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's that. I really like, I like the nose. The nose has a champagne, like somewhat funky nose. We'll see if that translates in the glass. All right, and so really quick too, this is their website and they have a Chardonnay. They have the red wine that we'll get to in a second. They have the rosé that we're gonna open up next and Sauvignon Blanc and then the bubbles. And so it says here that it, you should be uh, pairing this with Pop Rocks and Creamsicles. So, okay, I love Pop Rocks. All right, so essentially geared rosé wine. And something funny about these canned wines is that, again, going back to the, you know, bottles and, and not every occasion calls for bottles. And we're in the new world of wine, aren't we? So to, to uh, tell you something else about this company, they're actually one of the founders is, uh, is I think it's called Free Flow Wines. He started, a, he, he basically started or is very uh, integral in the, the uh, tap wine movement. And so if you haven't already been to a restaurant that serves wine on tap, it's not bad wine. It's really from a business perspective, much better for um, keeping your wine uh, fresh and your waste and also like again going back to the environment you know you're not going through like cases and cases of boxes and uh glass it's like just one of these bladders that goes into the tap system and then you're pouring like what i, I probably like 200 100 gallons i don't know i haven't looked up exactly how big those things are but they're pretty big probably not 100 gallons probably more like about like 30 gallons 20 or 30 gallons but now we're going to do the rosé, essentially geared rosé. These are all, again, from California. They say that they source from, from really uh, uh, good producers. Sourced wine also is a thing, you know, uh, unless you're a winery that's got all the money and has all those vineyards that you own. Uh, and even sometimes that, too. Uh, 
there's a lot of sourcing that happens. So you'll go to places like Lodi or uh, Sonoma, um, a little bit of Paso, potentially the Central Coast, and you'll buy grapes from producers that are basically uh, wineries that sell off their excess grapes or they're straight out like just a sourcing vehicle. All they do is, is uh, grow grapes to be able to sell them to other people. So we're on this rosé. This is a pretty pink color. It's, it's, uh, it's, it screams rosé. It's like, hi, I'm a rosé. We're not one of those like lighter colored, like, wait, is this just wine with like food coloring in? No, this is rosé. And this smells like rosé. I'm going to take a quick swig of water here. It's hot. And if you can see that I'm sweating a little bit, it's because it's like, I think it's, it's almost getting to 90 degrees now. Summertime is here. And what better time than now in the summer to grab one of these, bot, these uh, canned wines and go out on a backpacking trip or like go hiking or maybe a picnic at the beach. Just don't be caught with open containers. Um, the nose is really light. Like it's almost not there. The, the wine itself is dangerously smooth and it's almost like you're just drinking water, which, um, you know, we can't, we're not going to, like, we're here to just have some fun with these wines and, and especially if you're going to be buying canned wines, this is not, you're not going to dinner, you're not going to be pairing these wines with like a ribeye or anything else. You're just going to be having some fun. This is fun, but this is like, I could, I could see myself pounding this because it's just so smooth. Um, light, like tan, like acid, light, like it barely touches like the, the edges of my tongue and it definitely has those strawberry notes to it, like strawberry flavor. And now I'm smelling a little bit more. It smells, it smells kind of candy, you know, uh, like I can smell the sugar. Mm. Oh, that's going to be good to keep myself nice and cool on a day like today. And then we're going to finish off. Oh, real quick here too. Let's go. Let's go see the rosé. Let's see. They say barbecue and punk rock. Let's pair this with some punk rock. Everybody who wants to listen to some Ramones. Um, you can pair it with pizza by the slice, falafel or barbecue brisket. And then think pink starburst and then 80s pink rock. Punk pink rock. 80s punk rock. Starburst. Remember I was saying candy? It kind of smells like starburst. Hmm. All right. Now we're going to finish off with the red wine. Oh, and then we're, let's go back really quick and talk about alcohol level, alcohol contents. Um, the bubbly is 11.5%. The rosé is 12%. And we're going to get our rocks off with the ro the red wine, which is clocking in at 13.9%. So if you're looking for a bigger bang for your buck, it is in the red wine. You're going to pair this with street tacos, grilled cheese, and tater tots. I love tater tots. Ah, now I want tater tots. Ah, okay. So let's look at, ooh. Ooh, I don't want to spill this one. This is dark. Hmm. Okay. The nose is, is uh, more than I was expecting coming out of a can. It's got some sophistication. Um, I smell like, I definitely catch these elements of like leather and dark fruits. All dark fruits. A little bit smoky, which leads me to believe there might be like some Syrah in this Ooh, excuse me and probably some I, I don't know we have to taste it but I'm thinking probably like petite Syrah uh, maybe some other some like petite for dough I wonder if I could find out what's in here I'm not sure but okay let's taste it mm. I would say it's Got some Cabernet, potentially Zinfandel. Um, heavy Cabernet though. Cabernet and and I'm going back to going back to that Syrah. It's probably Cabernet and Syrah. And um, 
This would be more fun when the sun goes down, you know, like a uh, little bit heavier, a little bit um, thicker and really firm tannins. Like I, this is a wine that I would, I would be pairing with some steak and let's see what they say. They say that you should pair this with, this might be a longer video because I'm doing three wines here, but there'll be a reason you'll, you'll see in just a second why. This, this website's pretty fun too. It's all built up. Um, you're going to go uh, chocolate strawberries and campfire stories. Think of chocolate strawberries and campfire stories with this one. Um, and let's see if there, oh, there's a text sheet. Never mind. We're going to see what's in here. Let's see how good or bad I was with my selecting Merlot, Zinfandel, and Cabernet Sauvignon. So um, there you go. Uh, I got all of these from uh, Total Wine and More. There's like a whole section of all the canned wines and it was it was pretty fun. I was like, do you guys have any canned wine? They're like, yeah, it's way over there in the corner. I was like, okay, thank you. So, okay, that's that. That's the wines. Summertime, canned wines, very easy. You forgot your corkscrew, screw the cork. You don't need a cork, right? Uh, now, okay, so EOS. EOS is number eight, number five, six, seven, eight on the coin market cap capitalization capitalization this is at coinmarketcap.com website i was telling you about before uh we're looking at a price tag right now of four dollars and eleven cents i haven't refreshed this in a while so let's see what happens. now it's 409 you just save two cents if you're gonna buy it now not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor i'm just here obviously not a financial advisor drinking wine on you uh, i'm just here tasting some wine talking telling you about it talking to you about it and uh and explaining a little bit of the cryptocurrency world. So EOS, what's so special about EOS? If you remember when we were talking about Ethereum, Ethereum is built on like, a, it's called the smart contract. That's what EOS is. It's a blockchain protocol. Sorry, hold on. Let's, let's put on the helmet. We're gonna get techie for a second. Blockchain. Blockchain protocol that is built on smart contracts and you can develop a, your own blockchain on EOS. And the one thing that they're uh, priding themselves on is speed and uh, price level. Their price, the, the cost of transactions. Oh wait, where's the light? I haven't poured, worn this in a while. I don't remember where the thing is. Uh, oh well. Um, they want, they're basically like almost like zero transaction fees and they want to get to a point they're not there yet but uh, let me just read it. The smart contract platform claims to eliminate transaction fees and also um, uh, conduct millions of transactions per second. The transactions per second is important because all you know. Once we get to that point where uh, cryptocurrencies are going to be normalized and everyone's going to be using them, it's all about scalability. It's all about being able to like be really really fast with your transactions. And if you remember back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin only does uh, one transaction every there's every 10 minutes it does a block and the block is only one megabyte large so there's not so many trans there's only so many transactions that Bitcoin can handle this one's going clocking in at a million transactions per second so that's pretty fast and there's a lot of developers that enjoy uh, building on am I not oh that's right I'm not even wearing this right. See, I haven't worn this in a while. Got to get back to my steampunk roots, everybody. Uh, there's there's uh, a lot of, of developers that enjoy working on the EOS. I can't see you. I'm not going to wear this. Never mind. All right, we're done. <clears throat> on the EOS platform because, uh, because of its speed and because of its potential scalability. Um, so let's talk about the circulating supply because it's all about the reason that Bitcoin is so expensive on top of being the OG crypto, um, it's limited. There's only 21 million Bitcoin, but there are 1 billion, 20 million, 461,713 EOS coins running around. So 413 times that number will get you to the market capitalization, which is 3 billion, 782 million, 509,400 dollars. 
Who wants to go in on some EOS with me? Let's let's buy like a thousand. That'll only be like four thousand dollars, and then we can watch as things go. Uh, the history it's been around since October, actually since uh, uh, July of twenty seventeen. It rose back in the twenty eighteen. Its absolute all time high was uh, about eighteen bucks, eighteen seventy eight, and then then we've been kind of playing with you know the correction. And that's going to basically do it for this episode. I, I Again, I don't want to get too like deep and technical into the coins and, and, and make you like kind of glossy-eyed. But the important thing is just to understand that this one's different because it's fast and it's going to eliminate the transaction fees where uh, all the other coins are basically, you know, in order to, you got to make money. You know, that's not free, completely free to transact and do all the stuff. So... They want to do it for as, as little as possible and at a million transactions per second. So even if it is like one-tenth of a penny times a million a second, that's a lot of money, right? So I hope you stick, uh, stick around for the bonus time because I'm going to talk about the shirt that I'm wearing. I'm going to talk about uh, Libra coin, that Facebook stuff that's going on. And uh, if you're only here for just the wine and the, and the crypto that we're talking about, Thank you very much for joining me for this episode of Crypto Sipto. And until next time, buy Bitcoin, drink wine, and cheers, everybody. Mm. Yeah, I dig it. Can you believe I was like I was putting this on like it was like this? I don't even know what I look like like that. It's like the like a helmet. I thought it was my helmet, my drink drinking helmet. But uh, welcome back, everybody, to bonus time. Here we are with these wonderful summertime wines. And uh, again, going to, a, going to a party or going to a picnic, uh, you get two glasses out of a 375 can. This is 375 milliliters, 12 ounces. And uh, so, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you want, if you're looking for like a little bit more than those, uh, those split bottles are like, this is about basically the equivalent of a half bottle of wine. Um, mm -hmm. so let's talk, let's talk about my shirt first, this shirt. If you haven't already seen this in its, in its real form, this guy named Mart, Martin, um, Molin, he is this artist and, and, uh, musician from, from uh, Sweden, and he made this marble music machine. I hope I don't like hit like copyright like problems by playing just for a minute. But this was the first version of the marble music machine. And I'm just gonna let it kind of get. Actually, let's do this. Let's go to like. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Uh, like I said, don't want to get like uh, in trouble, but. Uh, he has a new machine that he is just finishing up called the Marble Machine X. And uh, he's actually like, you put it on YouTube. You can check him out. You go to Wintergatten, uh, W-I-N-T-E-R-G-A-T-E-N to his YouTube channel. And you can check out this video in its entirety. You can also see the entire progress of the Marble Machine X that he is going to be taking on tour with him. He couldn't take this one on tour because he built that machine in a room that, that wouldn't fit through the door. So he was going to have to dismantle it and it was very shaky and as you can see made all out of wood. I'm not going to blow it for you if you check out this one, but the other one's not made out of wood. Uh, so the other thing I want to talk about is that wonderful thing that people have been asking me about because they know I'm into crypto. I wear shirts, I wear socks, I, I do as much as I can to spread the word of uh, the, the cryptocurrency movement and uh, Libra coin. So if you if you haven't done any like research or seen anything about what this Libra coin is, I'm gonna try to just sum it up very, very simply. It's, it's a centralized coin that's gonna be backed or, or, or uh, uh, like a stable coin that I haven't done one of those yet, but I'm going to be doing the one of those soon. A stable coin is, is paired as closely to the US dollar as possible. So one Libra coin will equal $1 and only fluctuate a little bit. Hence the stable part. It's a, it's a stable coin that, uh, that you can transact with. And if Facebook has their way, they're basically going to be a bank. And 
That's why there's all these hearings that are going on in in the uh, the Congress right now that are are basically trying to like they're they're trying to get to the bottom of it and they're trying to figure out exactly what the intentions are. There's a lot of speculation that it's not even going to get off the ground because um, because they want to be a bank and if you want to be a bank you have to go through all these protocols and all these things in order to become legitimately a bank and a financial institution that uh that is part of like the, the the world monetary policy but my personal take on it is that they're gonna do it and whatever it's gonna take they've already been very smart uh the the actual like um i don't want to say facility but the place where they established the Libra coin is in Switzerland and Swiss bank. Uh, there's also, I think it's 24 different companies that are all behind it. But regardless of anything, what it has done, it has caused a huge amount of conversation in the media. And if you have also been, you know, it got all over the place about President Trump talking about the Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general being, you know, he's not a fan of them and yada yada. But I can promise you that that there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes that's happening in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that I've just heard through the grapevine, through the grapevine, that uh, that the government and politics and the presidential campaign of 2020 is going to going to have something to do with blockchain at, at some point. So, and on top of it too, if you're an investor, um 1% of your net worth can go into highly speculative instruments that could potentially pay off in uh in with big returns and uh, cryptocurrencies could potentially be one of them. So, we'll see where that goes. This is this actually, as it gets warmer, this is smelling a lot, a lot, it's, it's, it's smelling more. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm catching like, uh, definitely that's, that's Starburst now. It's pink Starburst. It's strawberry. It's, it's fun. Mm. And it is good. Light cherry too. So let's see. Is there anything else that I want to talk about before I go, aside from, I'm sorry that it's been, I think, three weeks since I did the last video. I actually filmed one of these, and then I canned it. I was like, I'm not, I'm not happy with this. I didn't have the right wines together. Actually, I, I didn't, I don't think I had any wines together that day. I was just like, let's just talk about EOS, and it just didn't feel the same. So, one last really, really quick check. This is what I'm going to do. Let's go to coinmarketcap.com, because Bitcoin actually has been on a roller coaster these last couple days. Right now, ooh, it's... Not doing so bad past uh, since yesterday. We're at, for Bitcoin, $10,627. Ethereum is clocking in at $225. XRP, that's the other banking coin, if you remember. That's the, uh, um, people say that XRP and Libra coin are going to be in competition with each other, but it, they're not the same coin. Uh, they're not the same, like, platform, if you will. Uh that's clocking in at 32 cents, so it's still a steal. You could buy a lot of that for, you know, your near next 1% of your paycheck. Uh, Litecoin, $100.49. That hack, that that uh, having or happening is happening next month. Bitcoin Cash at 314.30. Binance Coin at 28.91. Oh, see, these things have kind of changed a little bit too, because I haven't done Binance Coin. That's going to be uh, probably the next one. And then we're also going to do Tether. Because Tether is, whoa, there's a fly in here. Oh, it's because of the wine. Summertime makes those fly, those wine flies come around, everybody. Um, Tether is is, uh, is a coin that's got a lot of controversy behind it. And I can't wait to talk about that one. But uh, so now for all of you that have stuck around for bonus time, thank you so much for being a part of Crypto Sipto. And... Please let me know in the comments if you've ever had a canned wine before, or if you have any questions about EOS coin, about uh, cryptocurrencies in general, about Wintergarten. And uh, until next time, thank you everybody so much again. Cheers, buy Bitcoin, drink wine. Let's see what happens if you do all three of these at the same time. Mm -hmm. mm, apple. Mm. Mm -mm. Starburst. Mm -hmm. I actually like this. It's pretty yummy. Cheers. <laughs>